There are lots of different approaches to story structure out there. And I've given my own little take on what I believe are the fundamentals that we all need to understand about story structure, because every story, even the unstructured ones have their own structure. But most stories that we are familiar with, the big Hollywood movies, the hit novels, the short stories that get into the cultural mainstream, follow a relatively predictable structure that is what we might call the classical Western hero's journey. Now, the hero's journey was first laid out in long form by Joseph Campbell in his Hero with a Thousand Faces, and he lays that out as a 17-beat or 17-step process where the hero goes from his origin point, goes through his trial, his road of ordeals, and comes all the way back, returning to his starting point, changed, having changed, having grown in some way. But 17 beats is a lot to think about. So other writers have tried to simplify this. Christopher Vogler's The Writer's Journey takes the 17 beat structure and breaks it into 12 beats, making it suitable for Hollywood screenwriters. Blake Snyder, following a similar process, creates his 15 beat Save the Cat beat sheet. I've done another video on that one. But the most popular one nowadays that I've seen, and the one that I tend to introduce story structure with to my new creative writing students, is the Dan Harmon story circle. Now, Dan Harmon, you might be familiar with, he created Harmon Quest, a little show called Rick and Morty, and my personal favorite sitcom of all time, Community. What's really unique about Harmon's structure is not that he's reinvented the wheel or discovered the secret of storytelling or anything like that, but that he's taken something that seemed really complex when Campbell laid it out in 500 plus pages, and he's broken it down to a simple eight beat story circle that covers pretty much any kind of story that might follow the traditional hero's journey. So where do people go wrong with these kind of structures? I've always had a little bit of skepticism about these kind of structure guides. And I think where people go wrong is by using them as if they were strict outlines in a certain way, like each beat has to be its own separate thing. There's a different way to think about it. A different way to think about structure, especially when you're planning your story, is not as a strict outline where each of the eight beats have to fit one eighth of the story or anything like that. Instead, some of these are going to overlap, some of these are going to cross over, some of these are going to be mixed and matched, but these are all things that the story has to hit in some way at some point usually in a relatively linear fashion, even though it goes in a circle, it's still a relatively linear progress from one to eight, even if one and two happen at the exact same time and six, seven, and eight all happen at the exact same time. So let's go through the details of the beat sheet and then maybe you'll get what I'm talking about. So the first beat of the eight step story circle is you. The you is a character, every story, has a character in some way. Even if the character is just a house or a landscape, those act as characters in the absence of other conscious entities being characters. But oftentimes a character is a person, man, woman, etc., or a animal, possibly, if you've read The Call of the Wild, could be an insect, cricket in Times Square, could be some other kind of non-human object, could be a computer, could be an android, something that gets personified in some way. Something becomes the character. The you beat is simply about you establishing for yourself who your character is going to be. This does not need to be its own separate part of your plot. It doesn't need to take a separate part of your story from the rest of the story. This is just you clarifying who is your you. Who is the character that we, the audience, or the readers, are going to identify with and follow through the journey, through this story. What you need to do is just write down everything you think about when you think about who your character is going to be. That's your you step. You don't need to establish them separately from the rest of the conflict. The second beat is the need. We start off with you, and you is established in a zone of comfort, as Dan Harmon puts it. A zone of comfort is whatever their natural world is. Their zone of comfort might be extremely uncomfortable for them. Maybe their zone of comfort is they're used to being ignored and isolated and exiled from society in some way. They're used to being pushed aside. They're used to being bullied. Their zone of comfort might not be necessarily comfortable, but it's what they're used to. 
it's their ordinary world, as Vogler or Joseph Campbell might put it. There's a need, though, an internal need that this person has. Usually a surface need, initially, is what is named, that hints at some deeper need. But the surface need is what they're initially going for. The guy wants to get the girl. The student wants to get her dream job. The boxer wants to win the big fight. Whatever it happens to be, there's some kind of need and something that is going to drive them, going to either pull them forward or push them out of their comfort zone. The next step is go. And this is in the traditional Freytag pyramid. This would be called the inciting incident. And sometimes this happens all at once. Sometimes we get the you, the need, and the go right there at the start of a story. But sometimes the inciting incident waits a little while after exposition. The exposition sets up the you and the need, and then the go happens. There's no right or wrong way to do this. But the go is what forces the hero out of his or her comfort zone. It forces them to actually make a change or to attempt to satisfy the need that was already established. The guy wants to get the girl, suddenly the girl appears before him, she needs his help changing her car tire. Boom, opportunity. The guy needs to jump on that opportunity to try to talk to the girl. Of course, probably not going to work out for him right away, but something either pushes or pulls the character into the main story. The boxer gets a big opportunity for a title fight. Rocky. The student gets a call from the company that she wants to work for, and they want to interview her. Boom! There's a go. There's an inciting incident, and they need to respond. The character needs to respond. The respond is the search. Now the character has been forced out of their comfort zone, and they are into the unusual world, the new world, the story world. They need to search for what they need. They need to figure out how they're going to satisfy their need. So this is the fun and games section, as Blake Snyder calls it. This is, usually takes up a big portion of the story, is the character trying to figure out their needs. So again, don't break the story into eight exact same size bits. This step four, this search, may take up 80% of the story. Who knows? But it's most likely going to take up a lot more than just 20%. The character needs to go on the search, needs to try various things in order to satisfy his or her need. Then there's the find. And the find does not mean we're done. We're not there at the end step yet. The find is where the character has realized or figured out how to satisfy their need. They know they've, they've got their need within their reach and they can satisfy what they think they want. They can achieve what they believe their goal is. So the next step is to take. This is where the hero wins in some sense. The hero accomplishes their initial goal. They get what they set out to get, but they pay a price, usually a heavy price for it. The guy gets the date with the girl, but in order to do so, he had to bribe her brother. Now he's got to keep her brother quiet about bribing him, or something like that. The student gets the offer for the dream job, but she had to lie in her interview in order to do it. Now she's got to cover up the lie somehow. When they take it up, when they take and they pay that price, then the next step that's usually taking and paying the price is usually around the climax. Then there's the return. The character has to return back to the zone of comfort. Doesn't mean they not have to physically go back to where they started from, although that often is the case. If you read The Hobbit, that's a good there and back again kind of story where he goes on his journey and he returns very much changed. The return is when the hero comes back to the zone of comfort, having gotten what they want, having paid a price, and having changed, having learned a lesson from it. And change is the last step. Now, the change itself doesn't happen usually separately from the return. They happen at the same time. And usually it's a lesson that the character had to take away from the story, from the price that they paid in order to get what they thought they needed. That price that they paid oftentimes reveals a deeper need, which gives them the lesson learned, which gives them the internal change to deliver essentially the message or the themes, the ideas behind the story. So all this might seem a little up in the air esoteric to you, but I will show you how to break other stories from it. Use this to break down other stories and see where this structure fits. 
I'll also show you a demonstration of how I use this structure to plot my own stories. I just did one recently, and I'll read you guys that first draft of the story structure that I laid out according to these beats. You can kind of see how it's done. You can also judge me in my first draft if you like. I don't care. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys. I know there's lots of stuff out there on the Dan Harmon story circle, and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here with it or give you any radical new information. I will show you how I use it in particular down the road. But if you haven't tried this before, you haven't had this explained to you in this way before, if it's always been given to you as a pure outline thing, think of it as more of a brainstorming tool. Who is your main character going to be? What is it that he or she wants or needs or feels they need? What is going to force them out of their comfort zone into the search for that need? What's going to happen in the search? What kind of obstacles are they going to come up against? What kind of allies and enemies are they going to meet along the way towards finding what they need? How are they going to find it? What is it going to appear like when they actually discover their need, when they actually have it in their reach? And then what price are they going to have to pay to take it, to achieve that need to satisfy that need and how is that going to change them how is paying that price in order to get what they want going to change their wants their needs their values their desires their internal character how is it going to change them as they return back to their zone of comfort brainstorm through that you can think of each beat separately or you can think of it all as one continuous rotating cycle that's why the whole thing is a circle and try to break down some stories that you've seen or read according to this beat structure. And if you're ready and willing to do it, dive in and go ahead and plot your own structure according to it. And leave your comments down below. I would love to hear how well this Dan Harmon story circle has worked for you. And we will talk more about this in the future. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video, guys. I really need that help. That really helps out a lot. And my subscribers have been blowing up. I appreciate all of you guys so much. So thank you all. And until next time, good luck and good writing. Peace.